Hello. So, in this video, uh, we'll be discussing the vertical line test. So, we have learned already on the previous video and or uh, parts of the book that uh, functions are equations with this sort of extra property, right? So, functions. have property uh, that each, um, oops, wrong letter, each input has exactly one output. So if you remember uh, in the sort of among the various examples, we talked about, uh, for example, a vending machine, right? If you plug in the exact location of the item you want, that is the thing that should come out, not something nearby it, right? Likewise, uh, like a valet ticket, if you give them the ticket, you would expect that you get your car, not some other car that, you know, happened to have the same ticket because that would be bad, right? So. Each input, the valet ticket or the location of the drink, uh, gives you exactly one result, one particular specific thing as the output. So what's this have to do with the vertical line test? Well, we've also sort of mentioned um, that the, we have this idea of the geometric versus the analytic information, right? And one of the things about geometric information is this idea of graphing, of visualizing this data in some bigger picture. So let's look at an example and how we apply the vertical line test here. So let's take sort of some default weird curve. Um, I'm not going to worry about some algebraic representation of this or anything. I'm just drawing some random curve. And <coughs> moreover, Let's determine whether or not this curve, as I've sort of drawn it, whether this thing is likely to be a function according to this vertical line test. Well, if I'm going to be a function, I have some input, um, so we call that thing x, some output, which we call y. So importantly, x here is the input, y here is the output, which to use the sort of proper terminology, x is the independent variable and y is the dependent variable, right? y depends on x. So we are making some assumptions here. I will mention as an aside for those that go into Calc 2 or survey of Calc 2, um, you may run into um, parametric equations which are a whole thing that sort of puts a weird spin on how this graph works. We're not going to talk about that <laughs> and uh, if you aren't going to go to Calc 2 you don't have to worry about it. So we are assuming here for a moment that x is the input, y is the output. So then the question is, what's it mean to be a function in a graphical context? So I want that each input has exactly one output. So if I, if I think of a specific input, right? It says each input. So let's look at a specific input. So let's look at, say, this value right here, whatever it is. I want to know that that input has exactly one output. So what does that mean on a graph? Well. The x is the input, and the part of the graph, right, the curve piece, that is associated with that x input, this right here, that y value is the output, right? So if this is the input, some a value, and this is the output, some b value, then again, to use the sort of proper notation that we've discussed, the function, if this is some f of x function, this is the point a comma b, or equivalently um, f of a equals b. Still haven't gotten to the vertical line test yet. I'm just establishing sort of what we mean when we write this graph, right? So f of a equals b. So if I want to know whether or not this thing is a function, my question then is for that given input f, uh, for the given input a, does f have more than one possible output? 
Uh, and here, the answer is no, although it's not necessarily clear uh, how that works. So I'm going to give another contrasting example so we can see the difference. Um, but the answer is going to be no. This is indeed a function. Now, in contrast, if I look at another example, uh, so let's look at, for example, um, something like, eh, let's take an oval. So let's say I have something that looks like this. Okay. So again, this is some function. I have the x, which is the input. I have the y, which is the output. This is some function, f of x. And I look at some a value. Right, same, same idea. So doing that, again, I'm going to do the same, the same idea here. I can say, OK, well, if that's the input, I want to look on the curve to see where the associated y value is. So if I go up, I get to some b over here, and that tells me f of a equals b. Because if I go sort of along that x value, I find a point of the curve, and that is my y value. But I want to look at all possible y values for that x, which means really I, I want to go just not just straight up, but also straight down. So I could also hit some point down here, trace that back to the curve, and hit some other value, c, which is some negative y value. And that tells me that f of a is also c, meaning that this function gets me an output here, right? It has this point on the graph. And at the same time, it has this point on the graph. So when I say this function, but really, this thing is not a function. So I should really say this relation, right? Because f here is not actually a function because it has a point, at least one point, this a, that hits in two places. So really, when I look at this uh, example over here where I did have a function, when I went up or down from that a value, what am I looking at? Well, I'm looking at something that is going straight up and down along a, which is really, right, if I'm going straight up and down through that a value, I'm really looking at a vertical line. right? And what I really want to know then is along that vertical line, right? this vertical line represents all the possible y values that might be associated to that x value, all the possible outputs that might be associated to that input. And what I really want to know to know if it's a function is if there's only one place that actually has an output. right? It's all sort of just maybe it does, maybe it doesn't until it hits the curve. The curve represents the actual output for that input. and so. When I look at the vertical line, what I'm really looking for, what I'm really looking at, is all the possible outputs. And what I'm looking for is that it only hits the curve once. Because if it hits the curve once, that means that that input only has one output, which is exactly what I want, right? Exactly one output. As opposed to this, which was not a function, where my input, if I made this a vertical line along through A, it hit, the line, it hit the curve in two places. And that tells me that this relation really has two outputs for that one input. Okay, So the vertical line test, which I'm just going to abbreviate over here, vertical line test, this thing is a sort of graphical technique. Um, so it's a geometric understanding of what a function is. And what it is is you think about taking a vertical line through any given x value, and you want to see if it hits the curve once or more than once. Okay? For the vertical line test, tests a graph to see if it um, see that graph if it represents. a function. And specifically, what I mean by that is whether the, uh, whether the dependent variable y and the independent variable x, if that relation is a function. So 
y depending on x if that thing is, is a, uh, an actual function. In particular, this has to be true. This function has to have this property for every single point. So if it fails anywhere, then it doesn't work. Okay? So if there is any x value um, that the vertical line, uh, so I guess I should say such that to be sort of proper English here. Um, so if there is any x value such that the vertical line through that x value uh, intersects, right, hits the graph more than once then uh, I will say the y axis, the vertical axis, so the then the y value. Because it may not be labeled y, right? I, I picked these letters out of a hat, but it could be a and b. I mean, we've done a bunch of examples where we had functions named w and inputs named m and outputs named s and whatever, right? So literally what I'm saying is the dependent variable, whatever we're mapping on the, whatever we're using as the vertical axis, that thing. Uh, is not a function of the x value, which again, I'm using x here uh, sort of as a placeholder, whatever the, the horizontal axis is called. And when I say not a function of, really what I'm saying here is the thing that you sort of drew, this graph, doesn't represent a function, okay? But again, you wanna, I wanna be clear here that it fails if it fails anywhere. So like here, right, if I look at any place, they're all fine, right? Here, almost everywhere that I look, it actually hits twice. But I only need it to hit twice in one spot. So as another example, if I had a function that sort of went like this, the close dot there, close dot down here, and then went off the over there, um, where these sort of like lined up as a vertical line. Over here it's fine, over there it's fine, but if I put the vertical line straight through the dots, in that one spot, right, pretending I can draw a vertical line, which doesn't really look right, but in that one spot, it hits twice. So this is not a function. Okay. So again, just as a sort of quick conceptual recap here, um, there's nothing sort of magic, mysterious, or anything about the vertical line test. All you're doing is you're applying this sort of geometric reasoning, this sort of visualizing of the data to determine if it could be a function. And so you're sort of taking a visual representation of this property, this idea that each input, each x value, right, if you look at all possible outputs, it only should actually hit the real outputs, the, the graph, in one spot, because it needs to have exactly one output. So if it hits it in more than one place, it's not a function. If it always hits it in exactly one place, right, or not at all because um, we may have sort of a truncated domain. So if it, if it hits at sort of at most one spot um, on the graph, then you have potentially a function, okay? So it is a function in that case, okay? So that's vertical lines as a nutshell. A good sort of rule of thumb when you're doing it is to just sort of think of it like a radar sweep. You want to scan from one side to the other, right? So when I do it, I usually sort of visualize a, a vertical line sort of going across and seeing if it hits in more than one spot anywhere, right? So as I sort of go across here, I'm always hitting in one spot. When I go across here, sort of right away, I'm hitting in more than one spot, so this isn't a function. When I go here, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Oh, there we go, I failed, right? Because I only need to find one spot that fails. The fact that it works after that, or the fact that it keeps failing after that, doesn't matter, right? I just gotta find one spot that fails, and then it's suddenly definitely not a function.
Okay. So with that, that is the vertical line test. A sort of good uh, example of geometric reasoning. Okay.